Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to 3D Japan and I'm Phil and we're going to be taking a look at the Riverpoint POP3 3D scanner today. And I thought we'd do something a little different today. We're going to take it outside and see what things we can find out in the world to scan. And we're done. We'll bring it back in here and we'll try and scan our, my little 3D printed friend Mario here and see how well that works. So uh, let's head outside. Hey, I'm outside now. I'm at the local park and I was walking around looking for different things that might look interesting to scan and I came across this thing. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I found out this is actually called a lawn hydrant and I thought it would be fun to scan. Uh, unfortunately, the scanner does not work in the daytime with the bright sunlight. So I'm gonna come back at dusk and I will get it scanned and we'll show you the results. All right, here's my scan. I think it came out pretty good. It's really nice and smooth. Let's hide that. Okay, yeah, it looks really good. And, now I didn't get underneath of here, or inside of course, but uh, everything overall looks really nice. Uh, I did have a little bit of trouble getting the, uh, the stripe on this padlock because it was very dark, and it's a dark color, but overall most of it came out pretty well. And I think if I were to go back there and you know, scan a little bit more, and of course if I had some scanning spray, but this doesn't belong to me, so it might look weird if I'm spraying something on here. Uh, so I wouldn't want to do that, but um, yeah, overall it looks really good. And so while I was out there, oh here, let's take a look at it with no textures. Okay, there we go, with no textures. Uh, you can see you know, the numbers on here and the letters all came out really well. You know, it's not really rough or bumpy or not too much noise or anything on there. Now they had originally suggested from Riverpoint to use the high speed mode, but it uh, that was making it very noisy for some reason. So I just went back to the standard mode and it came out like this. It looks really good. And along with this, I did go ahead and scan a few more things outside. One is this, uh, this kid who is, uh, it looks like he has a baseball bat, but he's actually fishing. And this statue is at a local park, and I did this scan really quick because there were a bunch of kids hanging around and one of them started climbing on the statues while I was trying to scan it so I had to stop it early but I think it came out really good like some of this hair looks really nice up here this uh, is a bronze statue so uh, the real one is very dark colored like very dark brown but I think it came out pretty good. There's some like little rough spots in here that I think could be easily smoothed out. Like in here, I've got a smoothing tool here. I can probably smooth it out. Oops, pick the right file. I can smooth that out. And yeah, and maybe just do a little bit of quick sculpting to clean it up. And I think it would look really good. Okay, next one is at the same park. And this one, I got pretty much the whole thing is a rock. <laughs> I have tried to scan this rock with every Revopoint scanner, and this is the best result I've gotten. I think it looks really good. Yeah, oh, there's a tiny hole up there that I missed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the details came out really nice in this. Let's uh, switch over to the render tab here. I've got some lights set up and turn on the real-time render and boy that really makes some of those details pop. 
So you need some different angles. Yeah, this would look really great if I retopologize this. I could just use it right in a game or something. Okay, so let's move on and see uh, what we can do on a desktop, in a desktop mode. Okay, so we've taken a look at what this scanner can do in handheld mode outside, which is one of the things I really love about these VerboPoint scanners is that they can be used with no computer, just your phone, just whenever you happen to be out and about. Uh, but now let's take a look at what it can do here inside, uh, hooked up to a laptop. And we've got a turntable here with uh, my completely 3D printed Mario. We'll put on the turntable and see how he does. Uh, first, I've got some of the blue tack that came with him. And this Mario is a little bit wobbly, so I'm going to put some under his feet. A little bit under there. And okay, and a little bit under there. There we go. I'll just press him in. There we go. Fairly steady now. All right. Now let's uh, get the scanner plugged in. The turntable is plugged into the laptop just to get power. Okay, scanner is plugged in. Okay. Turn on the turntable. There we go. And we'll start a new project. Okay, uh, we've got it set to high accuracy. and feature tracking and okay and let's then turn on the color okay and then we can start a new scan oh, there we go there's our friend Mario <laughs> um, now this actually I set this up just randomly like that but it turns out it's pretty good on the uh, the right side of the screen here, the viewport, you can see a little graph and it shows that it should be maybe slightly closer. You want it to be green and in the excellent zone. So let's move a little bit closer. Okay, and, and then I'm going to maybe move it down a little bit. I want to make sure I get all of him in, his feet and all. Okay, and I'm looking at the depth camera on the left side to make sure I've got most of him in that little mini square in there. Okay, that looks like that should do it. And so, there we go, we can hit the scan button, or the start button. Yeah, it's doing a pretty good job, but I've noticed that I forgot to adjust the exposure in the depth camera. So let's pause it there. And I'm going to, we've got auto exposure on. Let's turn that off. And I'm going to adjust it up a little brighter. So I mean, you can get a little bit of that red. Ideally, we wouldn't have any blue, meaning too dark, or red, meaning too bright. So. This actually looks pretty good where it is. So let's do another pass. And it picks up right where it left off.
Okay, so it's having a little trouble picking up his hair and his mustache. So while it's scanning, I can go ahead and just increase the exposure now. And try to get some of the darker things like his shoes and his hair and his mustache. All right, that's another full rotation. I'm gonna try getting a different angle where I'm gonna lower this. And maybe move it back a little now that it's lowered. I'm just trying to make sure I can get all of him in there. Okay, now I'll try and do one more pass. Okay, that should be pretty good. We'll pause that there. And now let's try and get him uh, maybe from the side so we can get under his feet. All right. I'll move that blue tack. And let's try this side. I don't know if... Uh... Okay, that actually... Looks pretty good. I don't even need the blue tack for that. Okay, let's uh, raise it back up a little more. Okay, now I'm gonna increase the exposure a little bit more. And we'll start again. Now I'm going to have all these little white dots from the, the tracking markers that I can just delete from the scan. That should be no problem. Okay, I think that should do it. Uh, let's clean up the scan, get rid of all these white dots, and we'll see how he looks. All right, so here's the results of the Mario scan. <laughs> he looks great. Uh, now, some of the textures have the, the reflection on it because he was uh, shiny plastic. But overall, I think he looks really good. Now, all the details came out really well. Uh, these horizontal lines, I think those are actually in the, the model, the 3D print. Uh, we've got underneath his feet. That looks pretty good. So yeah, everything looks really nice. There was a little bit of noise kind of between his legs, but I was able to use the RevoScan software to delete that. And so let's take a look with uh, no textures. Okay, yeah, it came out really good, and uh, like even the M on his uh, hat is visible. Uh, underneath the hat is not perfect, but pretty good. Uh, you know, ni nice looking uh, between the legs and everything. And underneath, under his feet. There's a little divot here, I'm not sure if that's in the original uh, scan or if the original print or not. But overall, he looks pretty good. There's uh, some text up here which you can't really read. I think that's uh, also hard to read in the print. I think it's the uh, the name of the guy who modeled this. But, yeah, there it is.
Now, uh, seeing as I am in a uh, painting software here, I could come in and uh, repaint these or uh, use like a clone tool to get rid of these little shiny areas. It would take a little while, but it would make it look much nicer. And maybe smooth out a couple of these little bumps around here. And who knows, maybe he'd be ready to use a, a background for a video or something. <laughs> So that is our look at the uh, Rubber Point Pop 3. We've done quite a bit with it. Uh, we've got some handheld scanning done outside, some really interesting scans out there. Uh, you know, this would be great if you wanted to go out and maybe in your park, you could scan some tree stumps, uh, just various things that you find out there. Uh, maybe use them in your game or something, and then you can come home and use it like this to scan some smaller objects you have. So if you want to learn more about the RoboPoint Pop 3, I will have a link down below where you can check out their website and maybe order one if you like it. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's it for our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like button and please subscribe. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. And we'll see you next time.